Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm going to record two messages. <clears throat> uh, one just um, that I'm going to title "Removing Sin and Sin Consciousness and Guilt," so you feel worthy to uh, receive everything God has for you. And uh, then I'm going to just show you how to how to tap into God to make decisions and get direct guidance from Him afterwards. How to really make this practical. But uh, the the first message, and by the way, we're not going to have service tonight. I'll put that out in a in an email and and um, uh, post, and we've got drifts that are several feet high, and it's still snowing and blowing at my house. And uh, we used to say growing up in Iowa that uh, um, April showers brought May flowers. Well, in Colorado, I guess we say May snowstorms cause May flowers to droop and wilt. <laughs> Our tulips out front are all bent over under. Uh, at least a foot of snow without drift. So anyway, <clears throat> but that's, that's Colorado. We love it. So I wanted to just share that um, the interpretations from the writers of scripture really that got canonized in the fourth century were mistranslations of and the idea of sin and unrighteousness and iniquities, which means unequal to God. And I'm going to show you the writers of scripture didn't talk about that. They talked about your equality with God from day one. I and the father are one and you have the same glory uh, as they do is what scripture says. And it's, and it's, uh, uh, they were writing about um, your God's highest creation, this mystery that there's, there's two covenants and the seed that was cast out or the word that's cast out um has the, the strength of God to create. <clears throat> and there's the physical covenant, which is fades away. And then there's the spiritual covenant, which never fades, the oil of Christ, the oil that never fades, the marriage feast of the lamb. Uh, and so the, the eating and drinking of blood, there's really a misunderstanding of cleansing of blood. And I'm going to just try to show you some of those that, well, once you get it, that's about two love covenants with the creative ability of God, all the stories line up and you won't, there, if you if you take them literally, guys, it really is this mess and confusion of well, what does this have to do with this and and Noah's Ark and, and all these strange stories. We're going to talk about David and Bathsheba today, and he committed adultery, but that's not what he's talking about. It's actually if you look at the lineage of Jesus Christ, it's from the harlot, and it meaning there's a woman that uh, uh, is in everyone that satisfies the seed of every man, and that woman's within you, and so you'll see that uh, Rahab and all the different stories I've tried to show you are really about the second covenant of not with the physical male and female covenant, but this is all done within you. And we'll show you what Bathsheba means and David, that's always going to be last forever. The reign of David's going to last forever, which is, which is the man that's entered into the two gates. So anyway, <clears throat> and, and I was just sharing with this is, uh, you know, think about this where if, if they, if you take the scriptures as in Aramaic or Hebrew would read them, they would do the fatherly blessing. And it would be something like this. You tell me which one's better. You are God's chosen people. Everything you put your hand to prospers. You're going to run the banking systems of the world. You're going to run the businesses of the world. You are highly favored in the child of God. <clears throat> and guess what happens? That's exactly what happens in the Jewish community. And then we take the mistranslation or misinterpretive scripture and turn it into you're a dirty, rotten sinner, and you're barely good enough to get in so you're not tortured forever. We, you, you know what? That's guilt. That's sin consciousness. It's actually mistranslation of sin and guilt and, and everything that's in there, um, which came out of the fourth century, which I'll show you. So anyway, let's teach, let's teach people who they really are, that they've been blessed with every spiritual blessing from the foundation of the world. And we'll actually kind of look at those scriptures because it works better. And he goes, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So there's nothing that you can't partake of that I've already given you everything. It's your choice, what you want to lambano or lay hold of so you can experience in this life. So if you want to experience abundance, lay hold of it. If you want to experience uh, uh, great relationships, lay hold of it. Anything. Because I've given you everything so your joy may be full. <clears throat> I, like I said, it's really a mistranslation of cleansing, cleansing of sin, blood. Um, and so here's what I wanted to show you. Let me show you some of these scriptures. And uh, we'll just do a quick little recap. Um, all right. <clears throat> so Genesis 1.1. In the beginning created Elohim. Now, our sentence structure in English, we would say this. In the beginning, Elohim, or one God, 
of made of many parts were all gods created. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, the preposition, the noun, the verb, <clears throat> that's more of our sentence structure. So we would say, from the beginning, <clears throat> you were gods that create. How? A left toff. <clears throat> we create in the spiritual realm and the earthly realm. And we're the connector, the Bob. And I've showed you this over and over and over. So a left toff, it's 11,050 times untranslated in your English Bible. It says untranslatable. Now, the Hebrews didn't put it in there 11,050 times because they didn't know what it was. But guys, I'm telling you, a left toff, which they don't translate, is the very central meaning of scripture. There's seven words. The from the beginning, everything was completed, guys. Nothing's changing. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So seven is the number of completion. There's seven words. And then the very center, the central meaning of all of scripture is not even translated. The Hebrews knew exactly what it was. Aleph, Toph. Aleph is the strength of God, the, the covenant below. And Bob is the middle uh, <clears throat> the man resting there. <clears throat> there's the, the finished act or the act of completion of the covenant in the earthly realm, which that when a man and woman are in intimacy, guess what? The word is cast out of the man, and that carries the, the life of the man, the nature of that seed, and it doesn't return void. And the womb of the woman is submissive. She just returns the seed. And then there's the, the finished work of the spiritual realm. So the seed that's cast out in the spirit, and that's what we're going to talk about. You can choose anything that you want to experience, and that one never fades. The earthly realm fades. The, the glory of Moses, as glory as that was, it was fading. The second one, the marriage feast or the finished work of God himself within, within you never fades. There's a spiritual covenant and there's a physical covenant. I'll just show you if you go look at <clears throat> um, Hebrew for Christians, Aleph. The first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is called Aleph. Um, <clears throat> and if we, we just take a, uh, a look at some of this advanced information, it was the grammatria is the number one. It's a picto, you know, pictograph of an ox or the strength of the ox, the bull, the father, a left bet. It represents an ox, the strength, the leader. The numerical value is one. It's also the largest number in Hebrew is a thousand. And so that those should start to make sense to you. Um, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day, <clears throat> right? It's, it's all <clears throat> from the beginning to the end. It's the strength of God in the two covenants. From the beginning, you were, you were gods that had the ability to create with the strength of God, is how we would say Genesis 1, spiritually and, fit, and physically, or earthly. All right, so, and then if you look at, I've shown you this before, it's the same gematria or numbers of Yahweh, I am. So I am the Yod, the finished work of the seed cast out um, in the earthly covenant below and the Yod above. And, and they, if you go want to dig around in there, it actually says that, the Yod uh, where does it say that? The earthly realm. Maybe it's up here. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. There's Here's a man, reclined man, the Vav. So a man at rest, and he's resting in the finished work. The earthly realm, the lower Yod, and the divine realm, the upper Yod. And it shows you that Yod is the finished work of the number 10 of man. It's equal to Yahweh. So, and Toph is the two joined together in covenant to have the creativity of God. So from the beginning, you were gods that had you had the created. You could create spiritually, the upper realm, you could create physically the lower realm. The lower realm fades. And when you're completely immersed in the spirit, Pentecost at 50, this one's faded away, but this one never fades, guys. So <clears throat> let's just start to make sense. Once you get from the beginning, you were gods that had the ability to create in covenant. All right. Now, let's go look at blood because blood and sin, like I've, I've showed you, I don't have time in this message, but sin is uh, without your portion. Unrighteousness is not the same righteousness as God. Iniquity is not equal with God. Guys, I'm telling you, all mistranslation from the first letter in, in Greek, uh, <clears throat> alpha, if you go look at it, it says from the Hebrew letter, aleph, meaning oneness. Well, oneness, guys, is right here, the strength of God in the covenant. It does not mean not, like Latin and Greek. So they took something that's beautiful where he's trying to say, where I've shown you all unrighteousness is sin. It literally says everyone, pos, will experience the, the will experience and see the righteousness of God and everyone will re receive their portion or lot. Their Ameros is their portion of God. <clears throat> I'm telling you from the beginning, it's about these two love covenants. And that's where once you get it, gosh, all the scriptures start to make sense. And that's a mistranslation of blood and all these different things. So let's look at blood. So guys, um, <clears throat> blood, let's see, I, I pulled some of these up. All right. 
it's the word dam where we get dom or we get dam. Now, if, if water is dammed up, if a river is dammed up, what does it stop the water from doing? It stops the water from flowing. And this is exactly what blood was to the Hebrew. It was the, it was the juice of the grape. Now, once you, now the, the West and Latin translation took it as when I cut my finger, there's blood coming out. No, there's, I don't get life when my blood is drained. I get life from the seed that enters into the woman and stops her flow. That's exactly what blood is in Hebrew. <clears throat> so here's the dilet is the doorway. They're entering to the gate. And mem is the, is the number 40 in Hebrew, and it's turbulent water or flowing water. Now you look at the mem is closed here. So blood to the Hebrew was the finished act of the man that entered into the gate of the woman and stopped her flow. And, and mem, the last letter in Hebrew alpha is number 40. So it literally is uh, the time it takes to incubate the seed, 40 days for the embryo to form, 40 weeks for the life to come out of the woman. Blood guys, they've misinterpreted it. And so guess what? What does your theology do after that? He's given you everything that pertains to life and godliness through the strength of the covenant, the blood that's cast out in the physical covenant from the man into the woman, which stops her flow. And she's pregnant with new life germinates. And that seed within her becomes uh, in the same nature as, as the father that cast the seed or the word of God, the Dabar. <clears throat> and the spiritual one, the blood within where we see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, the pressed out grapes, and it's like drops of blood from his head that fall to the earth. It says it's like it. It's like it. He's in passion within himself if you go look at it. So that's blood. Now, what does that do to your theology? It's exactly what the Hebrews were writing about. It's in the finished work of the covenant. What comes out and enters into the, the doorway of the woman, which stops her flow, where we get the word dam. <clears throat> it dammed up the flow. Well, what's it dammed up the flow? When I cut my finger, it doesn't dam up the flow. But when the finished work of the man enters the woman, it dammed up her flow. That's what dam, that's what blood is. You see how strange now we interpret all these scriptures instead of these two beautiful love covenants where, guys, you have the, from the beginning, you were out, you were gods that could create both physically and spiritually a left off. The very center of scripture is a left off, guys, and all it means. All right. <clears throat> now, there's physical intimacy. And then there's the adulterer or the harlot. Now let's talk about this. Is uh, David, this David's going to be on the throne forever and ever, descendant of David. And so and I'll just show you that this has nothing to do with uh, a literalness of King David standing up there and he sees this babe. And if you go look at it in 2 Samuel, go, go, go word for word like I'm showing you. It'll say the washing herself means she's cleansing herself. Why, guys? Because... <clears throat> the woman was considered unclean. Not that she's sinning. This is where we get the sin consciousness. <clears throat> and I, oh, I'm just telling you, it's so, it's a thousand times better, guys. It's a thousand. I don't care what they're showing you on Sunday morning. It is not what the writers were talking about. So anyway, otherwise they miss the core of scripture from Genesis 1. They miss what blood is. They miss what cleansing is. So cleansing, when the woman was having her period, her mighty waters were flowing. She wasn't dammed up. <clears throat> the blood hadn't entered into her yet. Um, she was considered unclean. But once she was pregnant with life and life was germinating in her, the blood stopped, it was dammed up, and she became pregnant with life. The 40, 40 days for the embryo or the seed to germinate and form and 40 weeks for it to give birth. <clears throat> so that was the physical covenant. The adulterer is the harlot. It's the it's the one within. And if you go look at that Bathsheba, it says there's a cleansing herself within. So when the, when, when the man sprinkles his blood on the doorposts of the woman, she was considered clean and cleansed because the mighty flow of the, her period was not happening anymore. So it had nothing to do with sin, how we talk about it, guys. He's talking about the beautiful creative ability of God to create. So let's check this out. Psalm 51 <clears throat> from the choir master of Psalm of David, when Nathan, the prophet, came to him, after his adultery with Bathsheba, I'm telling you, it does not talk about a literal adultery with Bathsheba, guys. It's talking about, I'm not having intimacy with the, my husband or wife. I'm having intimacy all by myself, somebody that's not my earthly uh, spouse, which was the harlot, which is why the lineage, like I said, of Jesus Christ comes from the grace of the harlot, the five harlots, where we get Rahab and all the imagery. All right, <clears throat> so let's look at the very first sentence, and then... Um, for the choir master, it's only one word, <laughs> and it says to be permanent. 
okay, this is something permanent or preeminent, the, the holiest of holies, the most, the most, the kingly, kingly. So this is the permanent one, the most eminent one, the most eminent what? Psalm. <clears throat> so the music, well, what's music? It's words of David, the, the David, the David, and it's man between the two leaf gates. The permanent message or, or, or great words that are coming out of David. <clears throat> when Nathan, this is just Natan. Now, this is really interesting because it's Nun Tet Nun. Or Nun, I'm sorry, Nun, not Tet. Toph, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, two joined together in covenant. So, and it's two seeds of life. So, how the Hebrews wrote, if they wanted to be the, the best, they would go Nun Nun, the seed of life above every other seed of life, the most preeminent one. So it's the seed above all seeds, which is the anointing within you that never fades of the covenant within, top within. So, and guess what? That prophesies. So when that word goes out, you know it's not going to return void. Came, <clears throat> came into, into, it doesn't say him, it says into, <clears throat> into, in order that his adultery doesn't say that you could go in Ba, that's a really interesting thing. Bo, <clears throat> to come in or go in <clears throat> with into Bathsheba. Now, this is really interesting. The daughter of Oath, the mother of Solomon from Bath and Shiva. Now, so check this out. So, Bath, Bath, Bath <clears throat> is uh, Taf within. It's the Taf within. From Ben, Ben is the uh, Ben is the son, or this is the daughter of Shiva. So this is the covenant within of Shiva <clears throat> to speak. This men, remember this speak this this word this song lasts forever to seven oneself. Now what does seven oneself mean? It doesn't mean anything if you don't understand the Hebrew writers. Seven is the complete, the completed act of intimacy within yourself. Bind oneself, join oneself, guys. You get this? So this is the oh shoot, shoot. <laughs> shoot. This is the <clears throat> this is the, the the song that lasts forever of David, or the message that's coming from within that lasts forever. This this anointing oil does not fade, and it's. Nathan, Nathan, it's the covenant within of the seed of all seeds that prophesies so that you can go into, <clears throat> and guess what? Bath Sheba, the cleansing within yourself. So the adultery means I'm not doing it with my physical wife. This is a cleansing within myself. We've totally mis misinterpreted where it says adultery, the harlot. If you go look, like I said, all the, the Jesus Christ comes out of the harlots, the, the adulterer. <clears throat> anyway, it's imagery trying to show the covenant's not with your physical wife. This is all within yourself. Then you'll get it, guys. Have mercy on me according to your love and devotion, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgression. Now, blot out my transgression. Transgression is even an interesting word. It means to walk. I should show you this real quick. See, it's, it's mind-bending when you actually start looking at this stuff, guys. To rebel, transgress. Remember, I said within your within your loins lie nations twain. They're re rebels or rebellious. So this is the other one. This is the the second one that conquers the the physical, the spiritual man that conquers the rebel, the rebellious one. But if you go look at it, it's from Hebrew pasa, to step or march. Guys, I'm telling you, this is another Hebrew reading. It says wherever you step, it'll be given you. <clears throat> that means to stride over, or had intimacy there. And it literally means this. A, to go, a primitive route to stride from the spreading of legs. <laughs> so wherever you walked, guys, is where you had empathy to the in, intimacy to them. So we think is he transgressed, guys. He he straddled the the uh, <clears throat> blot out, and it literally means to rub, erase, smooth the grease that walks that that strides over you, the oil that strides over you. Wash me clean of my iniquity. Guys, I'm telling you, if you go look up iniquity again, it'll say inequality. It's from the Latin aqueous or equity, which means equal. And it doesn't mean you're not equal. <clears throat> this cleansing of the blood to become much many, it literally means increase 
if you want to take it as not level with God, it's from it's the the word aqueous, where if you take a level like um, a level where there's a little there's water in there and and it it finds its own level. It says the, this cleansing makes you equal with God. So if you're going to cleanse it and take it as the negative, cleanse me from my iniquity. It means this cleansing makes you equal with God and cleanses me from my sin. <clears throat> It, 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 no, it, it's the cleansing sacrifice. Look at that. It's the sacrifice, the cleansing of the sacrifice. Well, why there was always the sacrifice of a male lamb? It could never be of a female. The firstborn male. The firstborn male is, is the firstborn is the flesh. The first, the sacrifice of the firstborn male. Now there's a sacrifice that cleanses you from within. <clears throat> and then the, surely I was brought forth in iniquity. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Guys, I'm telling you, it does not say that. So it says, surely, how we think of it. Also, you were brought forth <clears throat> to in labor. You were brought forth in labor, iniquity, okay, and level with God. I was sinful. It doesn't say that. From kata, from the, my mother's conception. So guys, get out, get out of this idea that you're dirty and bad, et cetera. What it's showing is you were brought forth the equal to God when your mother conceived you in the womb, in labor. Now there's a second birth where there's no labor. Surely you desire the truth in the inmost being. You teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Purify me with hyssop and I will be cleansed. Wash me, I'll be whiter than snow. Oh my gosh, guys. It's so beautiful once you understand it. So do you get the 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 imagery of this is the preeminent message of David, this song, this melody, this, this, this great music that comes from within the throne of David, <clears throat> the seed of all seeds of the covenant within that prophesies and comes so that you can enter into the cleansing of yourself, Bathsheba, the adultery. So meaning this is a cleansing, not, I'm not cleansing my wife in physical intimacy. This is the adulterer, the harlot, the woman within that takes the seed of every man, Every single man, guys, has this, this woman within, which is the anointing of God from within, and you cleanse yourself. Oh, it's so awesome, guys. So <clears throat> now you can understand what it says when it starts talking about getting rid of this idea of sin was, is you're barely worthy. You're just lucky that you're not going to be tortured forever versus what the writers were writing about, which the Hebrews take. Like, you know what? You're a child of God. You are, you are God's highest creation you carry the power of God. You have the blessing of God as God's chosen people. Now, they, they believe it, guys, which is why it works. We're supposed to believe it. It says there's no Jew, Gentile, guys. Everyone has Israel. Everybody's converted to Israel, the man who sees he's God, who perceives that he's one with God, is Israel. That's the, the Esau, the first man that uh, is conquered or overcome by Jacob, the spiritual man. And we see that in Cain and Abel. And, and it's always... The, the, lad, the second born, not the first born male, the second born overcomes the first born guys. And all the blessings are in the spiritual, the second, the, the spiritual man. All right. <clears throat> blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the anointing with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Remember Genesis 1, guys? From the beginning, you were gods that could create a left off spiritually, physically. Guys, you can take this anointing within and create anything you want. Cleanse yourself. Cast the seed within yourself. Be pregnant with any life you want. Is cleanse. Right? <clears throat> now look at this next verse. For he, uh, he chose us. Except there's no he. It's just a verb. And it says ek. If you go look at ek properly, out from and to. Out from within. So the, the nature that comes from within that speaks out. So the word that comes from the inside out, all right? <clears throat> that's that seed that's cast within us that cleanses us and makes us pregnant with whatever word we put in there. Us in him? No, it doesn't say that. It says the word that's cast from the inside out from within ourselves, Bathsheba, the cleansing of ourselves. Auto, it means self. And the writers just can't help themselves. They got to put a capital hymn there because it doesn't fit how they interpret it in the fourth century. This is the cleansing, the word that's cast from the inside out before the foundation of the world so that we are holy and blameless in his presence. No, face-to-face -face in love, 
next verse. He predestines us for adoption as his sons. The son is, is literally the one who carries the same nature as the father. <clears throat> so we were predetermined, all of us, to carry the same nature of our father through Jesus Christ, the anointing that delivers and saves according to the good pleasure of his will. No, our, the will within us to the praise of his glory, grace, whatever you want, guys, it's for our good pleasure. This, this anointing within us for our good pleasure. He gave it to us. Now the scriptures make sense. I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So he's given you every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. So what does that mean, guys? You can take anything and go within. You can cleanse yourself. Cleanse doesn't mean you were dirty and now, oh, thank God. Now I'm not going to hell. That is a fourth century concept, guys. The cleansing to the Hebrews, the writers of the actual scripture says, this is the covenant of God, the strength of God. When you're cleansed, it means you're pregnant with that life. The, the water, the blood has entered into the doorway of the woman. Now, this is Bathsheba, the woman within myself, guys. The cleansing within myself is Bathsheba. I'm having adultery. <laughs> Please don't think that's what I'm, I'm not... Uh, outside my wife, I'm talking about this is the, the woman within every one of us that she's, she's the adulterer. She gives us any pleasure we want for art. She fulfills every pleasure we could ever have. And so anyway, this is the one within us. So it is simply this, guys. <clears throat> once, you, once you're cleansed with the blood, meaning that, that uh, uh, the thing that stops the flow and now you're pregnant with that life is the life from within. It's the finished work within. And so you simply do this is anything you put after I am, which is the nature of God within that will never change. You can have, so <clears throat> you could have, uh, um, I'm going to do, do a, a little message after this, how to make this very practical, how to tap into God to, to solve any problem or, or get guidance on any um, solution. So let's say you have something going before you and you don't know what to do. Now, you can choose anything, guys, and it'll create after its kind. But let's say I've got two great choices before me, um, and I don't know what to do. I'm going to show you the next service where you can simply go, <clears throat> You, in your mind, you give it to God. Thank you, Father. I've give you this, because I'm not sure which one's best for me. They're both good. And then in the next picture, you can use your imagination, the throne of David, to see yourself Anytime you think about it, where you give it to God and just trust God, the, the love of God within you to bring it to pass. So the next picture that you see, you see yourself past tense, believe you have already received it and you will, where it's simply this is anytime you think of it, hey, here's my two choices. I'm giving this to God. And then anytime you think of it after that, you're just in gratitude. Thank you, Father, that, that you gave me complete guidance. It feels so awesome that I can trust that you're going to show me exactly what to do and solve any problem I have. It feels so great that the problem's already been solved. And you see yourself enjoying the problem. And I promise you guys, in the next few days, something's going to happen or be so clear to you that you go, ah, that was the answer. That was the answer to my question. God will never leave me hanging. It's, it's anything that we do within, he's given it to you for your pleasure. So you can be pleasurable. It's, you can have whatever, any desire you want. So hopefully that helps, guys. Stop looking at yourself as not worthy. <clears throat> The whole idea of this guilt and sin, how we interpreted it without your portion, I'm telling you, it's not there. From Genesis 1, it was the strength of God to create any desire you want in the finished work. So once you get rid of that sin and guilt consciousness, now you can truly understand Ephesians. I've given you everything, every blessing in the spiritual realm. You can choose to take anything in the spirit, and bring it into the physical for your pleasure. His will doesn't say that. It says, <clears throat> anything you desire to the good pleasure of self-will, self-will, whatever you desire, guys. And then you become pregnant with that life and through no effort of your own, it comes to pass. So feel worthy to receive God's best because he's given it to you from the foundation. You predestined this to have the same nature of God through the anointing within that's, that frees you, Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of self-will. So God bless you guys.